Hi guys, John Berg Cemetery, South Australia. A few of you will be familiar with it. And this is in the middle of nowhere, really is. You have to open farmers gates to get here which we did yesterday at another cemetery was going to be a real special treat but I won't tell you about that now let's just stick with John Berg we have some history here Jamie's um, great-grandmother is buried here she died young possibly childbirth and you can see a lot of mounds now we came here a couple of years ago and it was nothing like this there was, there's about another foot of red soil and especially in the sites where it can build up around there. Okay, this one is in loving memory of Livingston McGregor who departed this life April 26, 1896, aged 24 years and six months. It's a lovely headstone. It's gonna take a few more years to bury that headstone. There are actually some that have been buried already from the last time I was here. Samson, Richard, husband of Ellen, it's in uh, 1911. The one at the back here, they're like little beds, don't they? So, so. Oh, this one's getting very buried. Sarah Luckcraft. That's just a piece of slate, obviously signifying a site. There's another one there. There's Jamie over there. You see Tigger? We pulled up last night, straight away got a flat tyre. So that was his joy this morning, or should I say afternoon, because we didn't get up very early. Yes, we slept at the cemetery. We often do. Ibsen, Beryl Edith, Edith, sorry, Beryl Edith, the ninth child of Richard and Ellen. And it says, Ellen, mother, Richard, father, Emel, sister, David, brother, J. L. Cornish, grandfather. Ibsen, Neil, husband of Beryl. Okay, there's a mound there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a site there. It's got rocks around it and pegs. This one's got a tall... Fascinating, isn't it? And this old the bug. See the bug? On it? Right on the top of it. Okay, this is Gib, John Alexander, he died in 1900, age 33. Let's look at what's in there. Henry Solly, 1831 to 1901. Another beautiful stone. This surround is the same. It's not as pointy. Similar but different, as we say. In loving memory of Martha Maria Homsch. It's a lovely stone. I'm not sure what they are. They must be related. No one's been out here. Gosh, they're so buried. Look, there's always a dead animal, isn't there, out here? Okay, loving memory of James Phyllis. He was 75 and his wife Mary, aged 79. 
another beautiful stone. Behind that one is Dora Kindley, 54 years, 1914. Okay, so if we turn back around that way, now we've got the back of the headstones. It's the one we just looked at. Let's go through here. There's a marker there. See that? <clears throat> That's the same marker that's on Jamie's great-grandmother's grave. Okay, in loving memory of Joseph Robert. Sarah Masters. Died suddenly. May 1922, age 68. Oh, I'm getting freaked out by the amount of red dust that's in here. And it's, um, Cemetery is going to disappear. Wow. I imagine the ones with the little glass features that appear new. That one there. Um, Gibb, they're all the same family? I think they might be. Mary Jean Gibb, 11 weeks, 1925. Now, it was a tough life out here. I do know a little bit of the history. This one says Homschk, H O M B S C H. Look at that little surround. So, Jamie's great great grandfather was the blacksmith here, Fred Smith. And we were fortunate enough to find the old blacksmith ruins. So Jamie's grandmother was born out here and then her mother died. This is his great-grandmother's site. And it's very disappointing, isn't it? And the marker again. There's another one here, an unmarked, that we suspect may have been the child that she might have been giving birth to when she died. I can't remember the full story. Look at this, look how full it is that they really attract the dust inside them. So there's no headstone there, there's a marker up the top. Um, I'm pretty sure the Oruru Council it has the layout for this cemetery and can tell you who's buried where and they're going to need to because it's going to disappear. A lot of these headstones will be okay, these taller ones, for a while. Obst died the 17th of January, 1890, 35 years, 11 months, and J. Obst, the son of the above, died the 18th of November, 1889, aged one year and seven months. That lettering's fallen out of that one. You can always often find it just laying down there on the ground. Not vandalism, it's just time. Beautiful headstone over there, isn't it? This is Cornish. The wrought iron. Thomas Mead. Bendleby, born at Highham, Somersetshire, Somersetshire, passed into heaven, 1885, age 31. So there's some English history. Thomas Mead, must have come over here. Now, when I did come here a couple of years ago, I know there was a slate one on the ground. That's gone. But this is, as I said, oh, that bit there is, wow. Oh my goodness, look how full of sand this is. So this is 
Caroline Phil Paris. She died 1894, age 57. Safely, safely gathered in, free from sorrow, free from sin, pass beyond all grief and pain, death for thee is truest gain. So, just give you a close up of that. A lot of flies around this one, I'm not sure why, but um, what did I just see? I wanted to show you this. Look at this. Now, I think, can you see that? Where are you? Where are we? Okay, so they're often in the mortals, and I'm wondering if it's come out of that. It looks like a massive one. Somebody's just tied it on there. I wonder who did that. So, can you see that sand is halfway up the headstone? The raw iron is buried. Mm -hmm. Even to get up here, I'm going to have to actually step up. Oh, is that the slate one? There it is. Look at that. Oh, I can't remember the name on this one. I've got photos of this. You see it? I know you're getting a shadow of the camera, that sucks, doesn't it? It's still there. A marker. Beautiful wrought iron on that one right ahead of us. It's completely stunning. This is Henry and Annie Napper. Bendleby, 1873. Let's wander over to that rock over there. This says, in memory of an early pioneer Will her mind gain gel knee Cannenberg? They were born in Germany in 1828, arrived South Australia 1837, board the Solway, and they died at Aladdie, South Australia 1895. Married at Encounter Bay in 1848 to John Gangle, who was from Tasmania. And their children were Charles, Jacob, Mary Ann, Alice, Louisa, Lawson. That's interesting. Isaac, Susanna, Frederick, James, Benjamin, and Samuel. Also buried in the cemetery, George Albert Lawson, son of Louisa, died Bendleby, South Australia, 1886, age 11 months. That's very interesting, because that's Jamie's other side of the family is Lawson. You see the sand right there all the way up. Okay, let's go back down along this way. Close, I don't know why ants like headstones, but they seem to. Luckcraft, that's a well-known name around here. McRitchie, I don't think I've heard that name. Sampson, I've heard that name too. So, now John Berg didn't survive. John Berg went under and um, the water ran out, as always happens in South Australia, and um, everybody left. What's left at John Berg is a ruin of a hotel. There's a couple of houses. I think the old school's been turned into a house. And a few other things. And when we get back on our way, 
poor Jamie has fixed that tyre. Hopefully we'll be going back past there and I'll grab some shots for you guys on this beautiful day in South Australia. Thanks for joining me. I'll just do one all the way around to give you an idea exactly what is here, which is nothing. The trees, some trees, lots of red dust, quite a few flies. Thanks for joining me guys, I'll see you next time.